Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be showing my reptiles eating black soldier fly larvae while also answering questions that I pulled from Instagram. If you asked me a question recently that was on YouTube, please check out the video that's on screen now and in the links below. That video is going to have all the questions that were asked on my YouTube community post. So yeah, if you feel like you missed yours in this video, it's not. It's just because it's in that video. One more thing I want to say is that these black soldier fly larvae were provided by EcoFlies. I will leave a link for them down below. It is an affiliate link, so if you feel like getting some black soldier fly larvae for your reptiles and you also want to support me, that's a good way to do so. But with all that said, let's go ahead and get started with the questions. So the first question asks, what type of lighting should I use so my gecko can tell between night and day? So for establishing a night and day cycle, when it comes to, I think this is about leopard geckos, but I think that you can probably apply this answer to a variety of different species. But you just want to have a fluorescent light, incandescent, LED, something that's not going to put off a lot of heat and something that's going to provide just like an actual light time during the day. And then when it's nighttime, that light goes off. One thing to keep in mind is that there are morphs of leopard gecko that are sensitive to light, including the different albino strains, which are rainwater bell and tremper albino but any sort of albino can be sensitive to light in my experience i think bell albinos are the most especially if it's like a bell eclipse uh, or a bell albino eclipse if you're keeping your leopard gecko in a room that has a lot of natural daylight that is going to suffice it, unless you're like in total darkness in the room where your leopard gecko is being kept you're not going to have to worry about providing a lot of daytime light for them to be able to differentiate between night and day. Someone asked, how do you know how much to feed? So it just depends. It's going to vary from gecko to gecko and it's going to vary from insect to insect. If you're offering a small insect, you're going to want to offer more of those. If you're offering a larger insect, you're going to want to offer less of those. If it's a more fatty insect, you're going to want to offer less of those. If the gecko is a juvenile, it's going to eat more frequently than an adult. And if it's an adult, it's going to eat less frequently than a juvenile. Just to make sure that I get to everybody's questions, I'm going to defer this one to my leopard gecko care guide, which I will leave down below. Since you just want to answer this specific question, make sure you check the timestamps in the description of that video and it'll take you right to their feeding. Someone said, where do you see yourself slash channel in five to 10 years? hopefully successful and not just like successful in the you know the monetary sense but in the sense that well mostly monetary <laughs> mostly monetary um I really enjoy what I do on YouTube right now and I appreciate my audience and I appreciate how many views I get but it would be better if it was more self-sustaining that like I didn't have to constantly be thinking about you know like how much I was making on YouTube or from other like online sources like a Patreon or whatever so I would love to be in a place where I can spend money on like enclosures or on different types of decor or anything like that without having to really think about it. I would love to be able to get them all matching enclosures like that I think would be so cool if one day you walk into a room or maybe I'm not sure if it'll be like a single room or if it'll be like a whole basement or if it'll be a whole facility but you walk in there and it's just all of the enclosures match oh my god that'd be so cool right now I have like a variety of everything and there's a decent amount of matching but still so I think ideally that's what I would love, um, but that's a far, far way away, I feel like. I just would like to be more monetarily successful. That way I could do more, not just for the animals I have now, but for the animals that I could have in the future. Like I would love to be able to actually like rescue and rehome. I'd love to be able to, whenever I see an animal in need, not even have to think about if I can support that animal long term or even short term or if I have space for, I would love to just be able to be like, I can do this. And even if I don't keep it long-term, like I could take it in, get it to the vet, heal it up, rehome it. Like I'd love to not even have to feel bad when I have to say no to someone, or if I have to come across like a listing on Craigslist or online or something someone in the community shared and have to think like, I can't do anything about that right now financially and in terms of space and yada yada so i'd love to get to a place where i could do stuff like that another question asked do you have a reptile first aid kit if so what do you recommend so i wouldn't say i have like a first aid kit but i do have a drawer in the pet room closet that has things like q-tips and 
little like syringes where you can like pull medication into or water. I also have saline solution. I have, I think it's pronounced teramycin. It's the antibiotic eye ointment that you can buy over the counter. It's not something that you need a prescription for. I also have neosporin without pain reliever in it. Someone else asked how much of each insect do I feed my leopard gecko? And again, I'm going to redirect your question to my leopard gecko care guide, just because I feel like that is a really long question. I just want to make sure I have enough time to get to everybody. So again, please check the leopard gecko care guide that is linked at the bottom or down below this video. Where do you get all your supplies from like driftwood, cork bark, plants, etc.? So let's start with driftwood. I like to get manzanita driftwood a lot and I like to get it from manzanita direct because you can pick out the exact pieces that you want and a lot of them are really nice. And sometimes when you order manzanita elsewhere, it's just like a stick. It's not like a branch or anything, but I have also gotten manzanita from Josh's frogs before. And as for other types of driftwood, like Malaysian or Mopani or the grapevine, I've gotten it from Amazon and Petco. And in general, you can also find driftwood at expos, but you know, we're, it's a pandemic. So not really a, a going to those as often. And then as for cork bark, I get it from Josh's Frogs or the Bio Dude or Expos, or I'll also be able to find it uh, online at Petco. And the cool thing about, I know Petco, yuck, but the cool thing about it is it's actually pretty inexpensive, or at least it used to be prior to the pandemic, because I don't know why, but probably just harder to get a hold of or something, but it's more expensive now. But every single piece is nice. Like you don't get to pick out the exact piece you get, but I haven't ever gotten a piece that I didn't like, whether it was a round or a flat. So I've always liked that option. And then when it comes to plants, I usually get a lot of plants on Amazon because they have the Fluker's Pothos vines, which I use in a lot of my enclosures. I've also gotten some decor, like in terms of plants from Custom Reptile Habitats. They have really nice plants. So I'll leave a link for them down below. It is an affiliate link. I also have an Amazon store affiliate shop, Amazon affiliate shop store. Anyways, I have one of those down below and that has a lot of the plants and things that I use as well. So you can check that out. But you know, there's a number of different places. Everyone has a favorite, even by a little, who's yours of the Leos? Oh, so like, who's my favorite Leo? I don't have a favorite. I literally cannot have a favorite. Like, first of all, I, I think you don't understand. There's over 30 of them to choose from. So it's the challenge. It's not, there's only three. I, I'll tell you this. When I only had two leopard geckos, Fritz and Renly, my favorite was Renly. Let's put it that way. But now that there's so many, it's a little bit more challenging. And also, I don't think it's very fair to have favorites. I just choose Renly because Fritz did not really like me. And funnily enough, Fritz is who's on screen right now. What has been your most rewarding rescue? Probably, hmm, I, I think I usually go with Sam and Gilly as my answer because they were the first two enigmas that I brought into the family that were like super severe and I had to, you know, get them back to a healthy weight and I had to remove stuck shed and I had to work with Gilly through her seizure and like it just, it was a lot to take on, you know, for someone who had never really worked with that level of disability before. Like they weren't my first enigmas, but they were my first like severe enigmas. And so I'm really proud of how they turned out and how they've continued to thrive and do really well. I'm also super proud of my work with Rago, who's another leopard gecko. Rago has cleft nostrils. He's blind in both eyes, has underdeveloped eyelids. He's got stunted growth. He's got a kinked tail. He's got extra skin. Like he's got all the things. Oh yeah, he's got sperm plugs. He's got everything you can possibly imagine going on, like all kinds of stuff from reproductive health to birth defects. You know, he just, he's a mess. And I mean that in the most loveliest way possible because I love Rago, but a person actually reached out to me via email and asked me to take in Rago because they purchased him from an expo as a pet only and couldn't get him to eat for over a month. And I, I saw his condition and I was like, oh, like that, that definitely needs special care. And I got him to eat pretty soon after I got him. It only took five days and I was really, really proud of that. And still to this day, I'm proud of, you know, how much Rago has grown, even though he's had new problems that arose. So uh, probably Sam, Gilly and Rago, but honestly, like I could go on and on. What's your favorite thing about having your job? Oh, like YouTube? I love the creative freedom of YouTube. I love being able to make my own schedule. I love being able to have my own input and 
not have to worry about anybody else's input really like I love not having to listen to anybody else I love not having to collaborate with anybody else and I don't mean that in the sense of like I don't want to ever do YouTube collabs I mean when I post my content I don't have to like run it by a bunch of people first like I just there's so much freedom and of course there's going to be negatives to that as well but I I love that there's so much freedom and I get to do my own thing when I want to do it how I want to do it without having to ask anybody else about it if that makes sense. I also really love getting to interact with people that I normally wouldn't have been able to, especially when it comes to keeping reptiles, because, you know, the everyday person that you interact with is not going to understand reptile keeping and is not going to be able to relate to it and is probably not going to be interested in hearing you talk about leopard geckos for, you know, any sort of amount of time. So it's really cool to be able to interact with people who like reptiles, who like animals, who are interested in amphibians and, you know, be able to share that like passionate part of yourself with somebody else. Is calcium with magnesium a better replacement for pure calcium carbonate? You know, I have to do more research on this before I can give you a fair answer. However, I will say it's very interesting that you asked that because I was just trying to buy the Arcadia supplements that are calcium with magnesium. So it's quite possible. I definitely need to do more research in order to answer this question properly. Should I be concerned if my crested gecko has yellow urates in his poop? Um, if it's happening more than once or twice, or if it happens like a couple times and then stops and then comes back and then stops and then comes back, I think it's something that you should probably bring up with your vet just to be safe. Can we have more white tree frogs videos and what do you mostly feed your white tree frogs? So yes, you can have more videos for sure. Let me know what you'd want to see. I currently have like a couple enclosure tours out. I have a couple feeding videos or they're featured in feeding videos. And I have like one really lengthy vlog about them. That was just them being kind of wild or like they took up a good chunk of the vlog. But yeah, let me know what you'd want to see and I can try and create that for you. And what do I feed them? I feed them dubia roaches more than anything else, but that's because I have a dubia roach colony and they're a good staple feeder. But they also get earthworms, they'll get waxworms on occasion, hornworms, they'll get superworms on occasion. So they eat all kinds of stuff. What made you start YouTube? So I... I'm going to age myself here a bit because it's been a long time since I started. So in 2013, I got my first trio of rats. That was Cookie, Lily, and Penny. And then sometime after that, I don't know when, but I decided I wanted to keep reptiles. And so I got my first reptile, which is a crested gecko in 2014. Her name is Rhi. I still have her. And then after her, I got Franklin. And then after them two, it was 2015 and I got an axolotl. And then I got my first leopard gecko that year as well. And so I was just really starting to get into keeping amphibians and reptiles. I just thought they were super cool. And I also had my rats still. So I was sharing them on Instagram in 2014 and 2015. And then I shared them there for a few years. And then I noticed that like, People were asking me a lot of care questions or they wanted to see them more often and in like longer content, like people wanted to see all the pets I had. And I was like, I can't really show that on Instagram because it doesn't let you post like long videos. I think back then it was only like a 30 second video. So then I was like, okay, let me see if I can like post on YouTube. And people had been telling me to post on YouTube, but I was like, ah, I don't really want to. I don't really know if it would get any views. I don't really know like what I would even post. Like I'm not sure how to make entertaining content on YouTube. But I was like, let me just post like, okay, I'll feed all my leopard geckos in a video. That way you guys can see them all. Or like I'll do an unboxing of when a reptile arrives or something like that. And I would just post them every so often. Like every few months I would post something. And that was in 2017. And then at the end of 2017, I noticed that I had over a thousand subscribers and I noticed that I had videos that had like 18,000, 30,000 views. And I was like, what the heck? Like, maybe I should actually take this seriously. So I monetized the channel. And then in 2018, the very first month of 2018, I was like, okay, let's start posting like every single week. Let's actually start to try to take YouTube seriously since like apparently I have a following here that I didn't even really realize I had and I've been doing it ever since. I think there's only been a couple times where I've taken like a month off and one of those times was when I had COVID which was last year but then you know that was a fun time but yeah for the most part I've been doing it consistently ever since and I really enjoy it. It has its ups and downs for sure but I would not change the fact that I'm doing it. 
Someone asked how many pets I have, and I believe it is 70 exactly. That is including the reptiles that I took in recently that were my ex's reptiles. But I have 33 leopard geckos. I have four white tree frogs, three African fat tail geckos. I have my four crested geckos, and I now have my ex's five crested geckos, his gargo gecko, and I also have his blue tongue skink. I have my Euromastix. I have two bearded dragons, a tiger salamander, a Chinese cave gecko, a tomato frog, a chubby frog. I have two fire belly toads. I have six yellow belly toads. I have a Lichianus gecko. I have a red egg crocodile skink, a Peter's banded skink, a fire skink, and I have a dog. <laughs> and I think that's everything. I just counted it like based on the enclosures as I was reading the question. So that's how I got 70, but I'm not sure if I just included all of them here. So if I forgot anybody, I do apologize to them, but the number is 70. I lied. It's 71. I forgot my garter snake, Mikasa. So 71 is the number. If you're not counting all my isopods, and that's counting each individual animal, not each enclosure. So yeah, 71. I know it's a lot. And if you want to see all of them, I do have a like kind of like a meet my reptiles slash house tour thing. Like you can see all of the animals and all their enclosures in a video that I posted in December. I will include it up top on the screen here and in the links below as well. But yeah, it does not showcase my Lichianus gecko because her enclosure was still being built. And it doesn't show my yellow belly toads and my fire belly toads because their enclosures are still being built. But Everybody else, oh, it also doesn't showcase my, my ex's crested geckos because I'm still working on their enclosures as well. But it does show the rest of them. Sounds like I'm leaving a huge chunk out. But the thing about YouTube is I never want to put something out that isn't like 110% my best efforts. I don't want to show a temporary enclosure. I don't, unless it's like, you know, a, a video of a welcome home type of video where you see a, a gecko in quarantine or something. But I don't want to show a temporary enclosure. I don't want to show an enclosure that looks too small. I don't want to show anything like that. You know, I always want to show the best. That way people can see that and think that is my standard of care because it is. So when it comes to like my Lichianus gecko, I worked so hard to try and get that enclosure finished before I needed to publish the video. I was up for ages building that enclosure at night. My feet were sore from standing so much. It was a big enclosure and it's done. She's in it right now, still getting used to it. But it was in the video, um, you know, just a little, a little snippet of the video was like, oh, here's my lychee, like here's a picture of her. This is the enclosure she's gonna be in relatively soon. Couldn't get it done in time. And then as for the, uh, Fire belly toads, yellow belly toads, their enclosures are still being built because they're expensive. And then as for my ex's crested geckos, they're fine. It's just not where I'd like them to be. Like I would feel bad showing, oh, here's my crested gecko enclosures and they look really rad because I just finished them for that video. They're not for that video, before that video. And then showcasing my ex's enclosures, which again are not bad. Like they're similar sizes, but they just don't look as nice. So I was like, let me actually make them look nice before I introduce them on this channel. So yeah, that video has most of my animals, just not a couple. Hello, I don't have a question, but I have a leopard gecko that is not getting better. I don't know what to do and I need help. So I get these kind of questions a lot. I know a lot of pet YouTubers do. And this is a, a challenging question for us to receive because I feel bad that the person is, is desperate and seeking help. You know, I feel bad for the gecko. But ultimately, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Like, I don't know how I could possibly help that situation. I'm not an exotic vet. I can't see that leopard gecko or that pet, like... You know, a picture can only do so much. And if you get these type of comments multiple times a day, then you're trying to help people nurse their sick geckos or sick reptiles back to health kind of all day. You know, and sometimes like you'll be giving them advice and then the answer will get lost in your DMs. And then, you know, they're kind of upset with you because you didn't get back in time. And then they DM you and tell you that their gecko or their reptile is dead. And it's just really stressful. And it is challenging and I understand where the intention is like a person is desperate they're seeking out someone who has experience like I, I totally understand that but I just want to use this as an example to say if you ever have a question about the health of one of your animals a pet youtuber or pet influencer should not be someone that you reach out to for information 
um, unless you're already consulting a vet. Like if you want to also try like, hey, you know, my animal already saw a vet, but I'm just curious, you know, if you have any insight about this. Um, first of all, a lot of us have already answered these type of questions in video format. I know for myself, I have. A lot of times people will ask me questions that I've literally already answered on YouTube. And if you just like look at my channel, you can find that type of content there. So that can be frustrating in itself because I've already put that information out there and you get the same question like 300 times a day. But then at the same time, if you haven't consulted a vet yet, that is going to be a much, much better resource than I could ever be as, you know, they're actually going to be able to assess your animal and help you get it on the track to health that it needs to be. So just something for everybody who watches pet YouTubers or pet influencers or pet TikTokers or whatever to keep in mind, uh, we are not exotic vets. And, you know, we're a, we're a good resource a lot of times, but we are not exotic vets. Which animal slash species husbandry are you most proud of? Probably any of my skinks. Like, I really love being able to have just one of a species and then you can like put all the space and money and time into upgrading that one animal. It's a lot easier than upgrading all the Leos at once, for example. But Roku was one of the first reptiles I got that was a baby. In fact, might be the first reptile I ever got that was a baby and I raised into adulthood. And so that was a really great experience for me. It made me super proud that like my husbandry was good throughout Roku's whole life in order to bring this little tiny baby skink to adulthood when so many things can go wrong. Not that like I was inexperienced and things would have gone wrong, but you never know. Like if you're new to keeping a species, it, it could happen. So I'm probably most proud of my work with Roku over the years. I could probably also include my beta dragons in that because beta dragons were one of the first reptiles that I kept. Like Franklin was literally my second reptile ever. So I went from a crested gecko to a beta dragon, which I don't recommend unless you know what you're doing. But like a lot of people don't recommend beta dragons for beginners. And I somehow like did it really well. Like even in 2014, when I first got Franklin, I still managed to do it well enough that like, nothing bad ever happened, nothing ever went wrong, and now they're in these really enriching, big, beautiful enclosures. And Franklin has never been in anything smaller than a 75 gallon, so probably them as well. I am a new owner to my leopard gecko. What are some tips? So I have a full, almost two hour long care guide for leopard geckos. That's gonna be the best resource that I can provide you with, other than like if you were to ask me specific questions. If you go to that care video and you click on the description, there's going to be a breakdown in, of timestamps for each section of the video. So if you're really curious just about a couple things, then you can just click on that or you can watch the whole video. But I will leave that linked below and on the screen for you. Do you ever want a rabbit? No, I do not want a rabbit. I love them. I think they're beautiful animals and I love seeing other people keep them. I think it's really inspiring to see people create like really elaborate bedroom setups, like big spaces for their rabbits. And I love how interesting their care is compared to a lot of other like small rodents and mammals that are kept in captivity. But for me personally, it's going to be a no. Um, I'm content with my dog being the only mammal that I have. Is your axolotl Harry a wizard? Yes, Harry is in fact a wizard. And Harry sustains her powers by, you know, devouring human flesh in very small doses, which is why from time to time you will see her try to swallow my finger whole when I'm feeding her. It's because she's getting little flakes of human skin that sustain her powers. So yeah, she 100% is a wizard. What tips would you give to someone to make this hobby more budget friendly? Uh, oh, good question. Because I, I don't do that. I spend so much money, like, you know, buying pre-made backgrounds or buying bags of substrate instead of making my own. I've gotten better over time. That's one, actually. Make your own substrate instead of buying substrate because that, it's so expensive. Try and buy fake plants that aren't like reptile advertise because they'll be more expensive also try and make backgrounds instead of buying backgrounds although sometimes like you could put a lot of money into making one and it doesn't come out looking great anyway um i'm really not the best to answer this question to be honest because i spend so much money trying to make the enclosures look really gorgeous and you know you don't need to do all that you could probably do less and i just can't do less but here's a good tip breed your own feeder insects. That way you don't have to buy them. 
What is your favorite leopard gecko and bearded dragon morph? My favorite leopard gecko morphs, I have a video all about that. I will leave up on the top of the screen and in the description below. As for bearded dragons, I don't have a favorite morph. Just any that are not silk back. You know, any that are not like really inbred to the point of having uh, issues. That, that goes for all species, including leopard geckos as well. And that is the end of the video. We're going to finish it out here with Shukaku, my Peter's Bandit Skink, eating some Black Soldier Fly Larvae. I thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed. If you did, let me know by leaving a like. Also, please comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, all the good stuff, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!